Hello guys, welcome to Knowledge India. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about Virtual Private Cloud VPC, which is one of the most fundamental topics of AWS. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, I'll go ahead and build a VPC from scratch and I'll, to I'll try to cover the different aspects of it so that you understand that how does it work. Okay, fine, so let us get started. I'll switch to a particular region, let us say North California. And <coughs> okay, so you can see, uh, you know, AWS recently changed the whole UI. Now you can, because there are a lot of services, you can go ahead and just search for it, even and click on that. Now, the VPC dashboard comes up and we'll see that there is one VPC already there, so which is the default VPC. AWS gives you a default VPC in every region. It is just for the purpose that when you are getting started and you don't know how to create a VPC, there is a VPC for you for default. You you know by default you can go ahead and you know just quickly uh, create EC2 instances in that particular VPC. But do not use this default VPC for your customer deployments. So our intention is to learn how to create a VPC. All right, so let us go <coughs> and click on your VPCs. I'll say create. Now I can go ahead and give it a name. Let me call it my VPC. And I need to give a the idea block. So let's say I'm giving 10.0.0.0 slash 26. And I'm keeping the tenancy default. There's another tenancy as available as well, dedicated. If you choose dedicated, then you will be able to launch only dedicated instances or dedicated host instances in this particular VPC. We don't want to do that. So if you are choosing default, then you can uh, launch all three types of the EC2 instances within that, which are shared, dedicated instances, and dedicated host. I'm going to keep it default and move forward. I hope you understand uh, what this particular CIDR block means. It uh, it, it represents a range of IP address. If we need to, if we want to understand that, what, uh, uh, how to calculate that, I can explain you that. Um, so, <coughs> if you see a range of IP address like this, it, repre it represents a range of IP address where the start would be whatever you see before the slash. And in order to understand find out how many IP addresses are there in the strain, you do a simple calculation where you do 2 to the power of 32 minus, you put the number which is after the slash, so like this. So which becomes 2 to the power of 6, right, which is equal to 64. So we have 64 IP addresses in this range. If the starting is 10.0.0.0, and it's going to be 10.0. Simple, right? So we have totally 64 IP addresses in this uh, particular uh, CITR block, and what we are going to do is we will divide it into four subnets, right, of 16 IP addresses each. Okay, fine. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll say create. Okay, so our VPC is created. Next, we go ahead and divide this VPC into subnets. Now understand that VPC exists into a particular region. You did not give any availability zone there. One VPC cannot span across regions. So I'm, I have created this particular VPC in North California region. I go further and now there are, uh, I go to the subnets. So these are the two subnets which are there of the default VPC. I will go ahead and say create subnet. I'll give it a name. I'm going to call it private A because I will be creating it in the availability zone A and I'll choose my VPC and now we need to give it a range of IP address basically in the CIDR format. So uh, I already told you that I'm going to divide the 64 IP addresses into four blocks, right? Or basically into four subnets of 16 IP addresses each. So I'm going to put it like this. Now two to the power 32 minus 28 is two to the power four, which is 16. So that makes sense. This particular thing start will start from zero and end at 50. Okay. <coughs> so 
all right i can just filter so that we see only the ones which we are creating now okay if we create one more private key and this time the other availability zone sorry i'll call it private c let's say right uh then dot so that's so dot 16 so first one was there up to 15 so second one starts from 16 and we put like this okay so so uh, following the principle of high availability we are creating two subnets private and two subnets public both in different availability zones all right let's go ahead and create two pu public subnets as well in the same manner okay and and that's it, that's it, that's it. 32 slash 28 <coughs> so the second one ended at 31 so this one is starting at 32 and this one will end at 47 and next one will start at 48 all right so I call it sorry public C okay Right, so with this, all our four subnets will get created. Now, remember, if you try to give a CITR block which is conflicting, meaning if you try to give a range which is you know already used, then it will give you error here itself. Right? Uh, basically, subnets uh, cannot clash in terms of IP addresses. Right? Okay. Now you can see we have got four subnets created here. You can see the availability zone as well. Right here. Now something to remember, we have divided it into uh, four subnets of 16 IP addresses, but the available IP addresses are only 11 in all. This is because whenever you create a subnet uh, on AWS, five IP addresses are reserved or kept for internal usage, which will not be available to you. So how, uh, what are those five IP addresses? In every subnet, the first four and the last one IP address. Right, so those five five IP addresses would not be available to you. All right, now <coughs> we move to the next important thing, which is route tables. Now, as you can see, you have one route table available with your with the VPC which you have created. With any VPC you create, one route table gets created by default, and that is called the main route table of your VPC. You see the main attribute as yes. Okay, I'll go ahead and just rename it. Uh, you know, for for our convenience I am going to call it say public RT oops sorry okay I will also create one more route table so this is going to be custom route table I'm going to call it private RT and one I'm, why I'm creating one public and one private uh, the public route table is going to get associated to the public subnets and private one to the private subnets so you can see currently none of them are associated to anything explicitly so it is also important to understand that if there is no route table explicitly associated to a subnet the main route table of that vpc will be used for the subnet so if i if i don't go ahead and do any explicit association automatically the main route table this one will be used for all the subnets guys but we will go ahead and do the explicit association now also um, yeah all right so uh, let us go ahead and do that we can just do it here go to the submit association uh, press edit so this one is private so i'll associate it with the both the private ones is save you will see the number changing here to two now Oh, I don't know why it is going so slow. All right, so this is done. We choose the second one and we do the same here. Now we'll associate it with both, both the public ones. Okay, save it. <coughs> so remember that one subnet can have only one route table, or meaning one subnet can have only one route table associate, uh, associated to it. But one route table can be associated to multiple subnets that is possible. We did it just now. So this both the route tables you see are associated to two two subnets, right? Okay. Now we need to go and do some change here. Because currently if you see look at the routes in both the route table, it is same. So there's no difference in the now we need to make 
the two subnets public how when when is a subnet considered public when there is a route available in the associated route table to the internet gateway now internet gateway is the entity which allows connectivity from your vpc to outside internet so i'm just creating an internet gateway it is a managed service you don't have to worry about its scalability availability nothing you don't have to worry about it so i created it now i need to attach it to your my vpc see there only my vpc is coming in the drop down that is because only one internet gateway can be attached to a vpc you cannot attach n number of internet gateways because it is already scalable okay so we go back and we choose the public route table we go to edit in the routes and we add one route now we will send all the internet bound traffic from this particular subnet you see here the igw started coming and we save this all right so we have uh, accomplished our public route table and it is attached to the two subnets already which means now both of these subnets are, have actually become public subnet great so one more thing which we want to do is uh, we come to nat gateways now what is the importance of NAT gateway? <coughs> First of all, let us just choose that quickly. Create it. You keep to, you need to keep the NAT gateway in the public subnet always. Remember, so we'll choose one of the public subnet, and you need to give it an IP address. Okay, I gave that. We go ahead and edit the route tables. Go to the private one. Go to the routes. Say edit, and anything which is internet bound traffic that will send to NAT now. So we do this and we say save. All right, so our both the route tables are ready and uh, it is all association is done. We have created internet gateway, we have created NAT gateway as well. Let us quickly understand what is the use of uh, in NAT gateway. NAT gateway helps all the outbound, all the internet bound traffic which is getting originated from your private instances to go to internet and then it gets the reply from the internet and send gives it to your private instances let's say in your private uh, subnet you have got uh, you know a database server a database server needs to download some some db level or os level patches from the internet so it will originate traffic to internet and because private instances are not going to have public ip they can never communicate directly to the internet it sends traffic first to nat gateway and nat gateway sends it to the internet gets the reply back and gives it to the private instance it just acts as your as a forward proxy as uh, you know you people have in your organization now nat gateway is also a managed service so you do not have to worry about its availability and scalability at all whenever traffic increases it will scale automatically you don't have to worry about it and we had chosen and placed it in the public subnet this particular public subnet that's where you see one ip address got reduced because nat gateway is using one of the private ip as well of course all right so we have um, all this done so this is how you can create uh, a vpc you can divide it into subnets uh, you can you can size it in the way you want i have kept it simple here based on your needs you can you know choose different sizes you can probably keep public subnets smaller and private subnets bigger and uh, then place your uh, instances within that few quick settings here we'll go ahead and for the for the public subnets we will change one property which is modify auto assign public ip will make it true which means uh, this property will be shown uh, when you are launching instances in this particular subnet so we want that uh, when instances are being launched in the public subnet they should get a public ip that's why we are making this particular property as true and uh, at the vpc level you can go ahead and select your vpc you can go ahead and select edit dns resolution this is yes already so it is good can also do edit uh, DNS hostname so that uh, the instances launched in this particular VPC they get a uh, private hostname as well. All right, so I think we are good with that. Uh, I will end uh, this tutorial here. If you have any questions related to VPC, please go ahead and write it in the comment section. You can subscribe and like this and share this. We will go ahead and in another video I will go ahead and launch instances and we'll show you how it works between public and private instances. All right, thank you. Have a great time. Bye-bye.